How's it going everyone? Exciting news, iOS 18.2 is officially released for everybody, not just developer betas or beta testers, as we have it installed right here on our main device. Now the compatible devices are listed right there on the screen. That's able to run iOS 18, it's all fully compatible. And don't worry about this, I'm gonna go over this as well as a nice little bonus at the end of the video. Now timestamps and everything else will be linked in the description down below for your pleasure. Now we're gonna go ahead and start off with the non-Apple intelligence stuff first, as these are the features that are gonna be available to everybody else, regardless if you have the latest iPhone or not. So one of the new updates is actually your photo app. By launching the photo app, and when you select a video, you'll see on top that the text is more centered on iOS 18.2 versus iOS 18.1. And, and if you hold the second slider over here, you'll see that it actually displays the millisecond on the bottom corner versus iOS 18.1, it wouldn't. In addition to that, on iOS 18.1, it will automatically loop, where on iOS 18.2, you can pause the looping. As you can find this new setting in the settings section of your iPhone, you scroll all the way down to all apps. From here, you'll see a new default apps section, where it'll categorize all your settings for your default apps, like your email, messages, calling, and calling filtering, all in one tab now. But if you scroll down to the photo section, faster just to search it up and go into photos. And if you scroll down, you'll see an auto loop function where you could disable that or enable it. And then if we enter wiggle mode and go into edit and tap customize and select dark mode for our app icons, right? When you launch the setting app, it actually will coordinate to the dark icons that you have selected on your homepage with your app icons for settings and everything else in general, where previously it would just mimic the default icons that we all know and love now. And this also applies whenever you like want to share something. So right now I took a screenshot. I'm going to hit the up arrow to share it. The icons over here have also been updated to follow the dark mode icon if supported, not like Amazon is right now. Then as for the podcast app, the podcast app also received a new update because if we click on library, there's now new categories. We can search based off categories and if you hit manage, you can add additional categories you may be interested in, like stand-up, true crime, and etc. Business news, as an example, if we hit add and click on it, you can also favorite this as well. So that's a new little tool added. Now, in terms of Apple TV, the Apple TV app also received a new update because now you can search off more specific categories. As an example would be action movies with swords. So you can be more detailed than ever before. So you can also say examples like movies based on space or in space, I should say, and etc. This feature is also available on Apple Music as well. As you could do more specific searches, like an example, I just searched up instrumental EDM songs and all these songs are instrumental and they are EDM based. So you could also do this based off your mood too. And then as for the mail app, ignore this, it's all junk mail. Your mail is now automatically categorized as you may already be aware of, but a lot of people don't know this. You can still select the little dots icon on top right here and select list view if you don't, if you want to reverse back to the classic original look, if you're not a fan of it. So you do have that reverse ability. And then in Safari, by trying to open up a new tab and tap plus, and if you scroll all the way to the very bottom and you tap edit, you have new wallpapers to select from, or you can import your very own like I have here. And then if you're using Apple's AirTag, the Find My feature, after you select an AirTag, if you go all the way to the very bottom, if you mark this AirTag loss, you can update your contact information. So when it's found, they know how, where to get a hold of you. But in the very bottom, there's now a new share item location. So if I will hit share item location and tap on here, a new splash screen animation will pop up instructing us how we could send this information to another user without having them to be a part of your Apple ID account, which allows you to send an email, which will give somebody else access to your AirTag. So it's extremely handy to use, especially with the TSA, as this is one way they could actually like help you locate your baggage, even if you're not at the airport. And then if you have your hands on a new AirPods Pro second generation and you are not based in the US, the hearing aid functionality is now fully compatible to be used in other regions. I have the complete list right there on the side of the screen. Yes, finally, the hearing aid functionality for AirPods Pro 2nd Gen are now available in other regions. Another update can be located in the Voice Memo app. As soon as you hit record, you now have the ability to do 
voiceover overlays. Here's one I did a while ago. If I hit the audio logs, I go time it. And as you see here, we have a new plus icon. If I tap on this and hit record, you can actually overlay your previous voice memos. Say recording, right? Recording has been layered. But if you click on it, and then if you look closely, you'll see a new layer icon right next to that voice recording. But if you select it and tap the dots and hit edit recording, you can continue adding more. In addition to that, you can separate the layers as well, allowing it to be easier to edit. But if you tap on the edit icon on the top left, you have a layer mixer to allow the second recording to be louder than the first recording, or you can also enhance it as well. So you do have some editing tool options for it, not just your transcript. Then if you have an Apple Watch, so long as the Apple Watch is on the latest version of WatchOS 11.2, by launching the camera app, and if you tap record, you now have the pause ability for your recording where you can pause your recording and resume. The same tool that was given to us on iOS 18 is now on the Apple Watch as well. Now, if you wish to limit the speaker volume, there's a new speaker volume tool. You'll locate it in the settings and look for sound and heptics. In the sound and heptic tab, if you scroll down, you'll find a new built-in speaker volume limit. By selecting here, you can enable it and set a volume limit, how loud you want the external speakers of your iPhone to be. So you can actually cap that now. In addition to that, if you like to enable a volume slider on your lock screen, regardless if there's audio playing or not, you can now manually override that tool. So on your main system settings, go into accessibility and go down and look for the audio and visual tab right in here and enable always show volume control. So now if we play something in the background, could be a video, but if our case, I'm gonna select a song, lower the audio and just pause it, lock our iPhone, you'll see we always have the audio slider right here and available, regardless if the music is playing or not. And then in control center, by enabling edit mode and tap add control, there's now this new type to Siri control you can now add. So once you add this, just tap here and you have the ability to do immediately tap to Siri. But again, you can always just do that to have access to that as well. And if you're using iPhone mirroring for your Mac, it now supports hotspot. So you can have your hotspot enable as you're doing that. Previously, that was not a feature that was available to us. But that's all the basic non-Apple intelligent stuff for every iPhone that's compatible. Now let's talk about the Apple intelligent stuff for the iPhone 15 Pro or newer models, excluding the iPad and Mac. They also support Apple intelligence, but we're just strictly focusing on the iPhone. And the first one is Playground. Right here, Apple Playground. Now it's snappier than ever before. If you'd like to create a new image, you simply just tap on your profile over here and select the face you like to select and then tap done. Wait a couple of seconds and it'll generate it based off that image. You can also tap plus to import a photo if it's somebody else or take a photo, a selfie right there. You can select the animation style. Then if you'd like to change the style of the image, you can also tap edit right here and select between these other options as well as skin tone. Once you find one that you're satisfied with, select the face that you like to create these images from, or you can tap edit. It'll search up your library and you can select between these other profiles that Apple Intelligence have created. You can also choose your very own by hitting choose other photo. But by simply tapping this and select, selecting what type of category you want to use, you want fireworks in the background, allow it to generate, and you can tap on it and you can see your two little options right here. And once you're satisfied, you can tap these dots, you copy, share it, save image, or report a concern. But that's Playground in a nutshell. Another cool tool is Genemoji. You'll simply have access to it by launching the message app with somebody you're talking to. Tap the emoji icon and right here, tap on the little face. And from here, just type up something that comes to mind. So I'm going to do smelly poop. So we get that poop emoji, you know, hit done. Take a couple of seconds to generate it. And just like that, it created our options. So I really did create some stinky emojis right here. And it just goes on and on and on until you find something you like. We're going to add this. Tap add, and now we have successfully created emoji. Then you can tap send, and if you scroll back, you can react to it with this emoji as well. You should see it listed right there. That's Jet Emoji in a nutshell. Another cool thing that Apple Intelligence can do is lo located in a note app, and that is drawing. If we draw something like 
Let's just draw a truck real quick. Long bed, because that's how pickup trucks roll. All right, that's my best truck right there. The magic wand. If you tap on this new tool and you circle around the icon or the drawing that you created, you could describe what you were trying to draw. So I'm just going to type in truck, tap done. And based off our drawing outline and in the description, it AI generated a truck and we have more options to choose from. And once you're satisfied, just tap done. And now you have an AI generated image of a pickup truck, which can be super useful if you're in a, if you're grouped in a note app and you guys are trying to share ideas. And then this doesn't just end there. You see, if we tap done and we have access to our keyboard and you click on the Apple intelligence icon, on the very bottom, there's now a new compose option where you use ChatGPT to compose data for you. So as an example would be, show me the benefits between a gas vehicle and an electric vehicle. And then tap search. It's gonna compose something for us. And then basically gives us everything we need to know with, between the benefits over a gas as well as an electric vehicle. And you can rewrite it as well as add more details. So it's pretty crazy how it's able to come up with all this information in just a matter of seconds. And if you have access to ChatGPT, like you have a ChatGPT account that you actually do use, by going into the iPhone settings and scrolling down to the Apple Intelligence and Siri tab, from here, there's a ChatGPT section. So if you're a subscriber to ChatGPT Plus or Pro, you could then just simply log in and you'll be able to utilize your subscription benefits. But you don't need to have a subscription to really utilize this, as the free version will work just fine to have everything synced and logged in. Now, if you like to talk to ChatGPT, but also have Siri available on standby, you could verbally just command to ask to talk to ChatGPT instead of Siri. So an example would be, ask ChatGPT. Hi there, I'm here to help. And you'll be able to talk to ChatGPT instead of Siri. You could bypass it that way. And then if you like to disable the request to talk to ChatGPT and just make it default, by simply just going into your settings and go into Apple Intelligence and Siri, Scroll down in the ChatGPT extension, tap on here. And then on this page where it says confirm to ChatGPT request, disable it. And now every time when you verbally activate the virtual voice assistant, you're really just talking to ChatGPT. So if I say, give me a good hamburger recipe, ChatGPT is the default regardless. And on the top here, you have a copy icon. You can always copy and paste it somewhere on your notes or something like that as an example. Now, if you have an iPhone 16 with the new action camera button right here, by long holding, this is going to launch visual intelligence, which allows you to do stuff like this. If you're unsure what kind of product you're looking at, you can always tap search and utilizing your camera, you could tap search and utilizing Google images to determine what you're looking at. You may also ask it questions too. If you have questions between the image that you're looking at, if you're unsure what kind of AirPod this is, ChatGPT will likely describe it right here for you. And you can also engage in a conversation this way as well if you want to know more specification to that product or questions you may have. So that's everything new on iOS 18.2. Now let's talk about the app that I was using in the very beginning of this video that basically allowed me to actually use a classic iPod control layout on my main device, which works extremely well, gives you haptic feedback. You can basically search for your music albums, your playlists from here, and when you select it, it really does behave like an actual iPod classic. And with the OLED the screen, it really does look like it. I can hit skip, pause. You can also go back and go into settings and change the theme of your device if you own like any of these older classic iPods. So if you have like the white one, silver one, or that special edition one, you could just change skin right here. And this is all thanks to this app over here. So the app that allows you to do this is called My Classic Retro Console. I have a link in the description down below. But by simply launching this app, it will take you to this classic like Game Boy Color theme, right? And here you can launch your podcast, listen to music as well, play some like knockoff Nintendo games, as well as have access to like a weird virtual camera, basically like an old school like camera, you kind of see that. But there's a cool little Easter egg to this app, you see? By entering the iconic Konami sheet code, like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, and BA, you will unlock the My Classic look and just tap next. And basically it turns your iPhone into an actual iPod Classic. It even monitors your battery life percentage. And it does this by utilizing your Apple Music app. So it has these two apps running in the background. So once you shuffle a song, it's playing, right? 
And if we go back to our music app, it shows that it's playing it right there. So definitely an interesting, unique app right there. And I'm definitely gonna start using it a lot more, especially during the gym, just for the simple layout. Anyways, there we have it. Those are all the important features that got added on iOS 18.2. Let me know in the comment section which one of these is your personal favorite. And if we might have overlooked one, feel free to comment down below for the rest of us. Now, if you enjoyed, you know what to do. Hit that like button as it only takes two seconds to do and it strongly supports the channel, which is why you don't see integrated ads and also allows this video to be recommended and shown to other people easier. So it also helps out the community. And as soon as iOS 18.3 is out, I'll be sure to make a follow-up update video as well. Thank you so much for watching.